Hey guys, I'm at the Glendale Cemetery in Des Moines, Iowa. That's in Polk County. And I'm uh, here for the grave of Vice President Henry Wallace. Uh, Henry Wallace was born, uh, like I said, he served as a, oh, sorry, he was a, uh, he was an American journalist, farmer, businessman, and ultimately politician. He served as the 33rd Vice President of the United States, the 11th uh, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, the 10th U.S. Secretary of Commerce. He was a Progressive Party nominee in the 1948 uh, presidential election so uh quite a quite a political history he had so a little bit about henry wallace um he's the eldest son of henry senior who is also a u.s secretary of ag or culture uh, henry was born in adair county iowa orient actually not too far from my hometown going to see his childhood home was always a uh, was always a school trip for us every year for quite a while uh and he was born in 1888. Anyways, he attended Iowa State College, which is now a university at the time, and he studied journalism. And he was going to take over the Wallace Farmer, which was the uh, publication of his family's publication. Um, he also founded Hybrid Corn Company, uh, which became really successful. Um, and he was uh, he was quite a quite a smart individual. After his father's death in 1924, he had drifted away from the Republican Party and uh, uh, became a Democrat. Because um, his father had served under Harding, I believe. Um, and he became the Democratic nominee for Franklin Roosevelt in the 1932 presidential election. Uh, Wallace served as Secretary of Ag under Roosevelt from 33 to 40. So he had a, but he was pretty opposed. Oh, I'm sorry, he strongly supported uh, Roosevelt's New Deal and uh, uh, presided over a major shift in federal policies, agricultural policies. Um, so he, uh, Wallace was then nominated for vice president in 1940 at the Democratic National Convention, and the uh, Roosevelt Wallace ticket won the 1940 presidential election. And Wallace continued to play a very important role in Roosevelt's administration uh, before and during World War II. At the 1944 Democratic Convention, conservative party leaders, um, oh, look at this one here, Coco. I don't recognize that name. I recognize a lot of Des Moines names, but not that one. Um, so where was I? Oh, yeah, during the 1944 Democratic Convention, uh, conservative party leaders defeated Wallace's bid for renomination and placed Harry Truman on the Democratic ticket as vice president of the Roosevelt. Truman ticket, of course, won, as we all know. And in uh, 1945, uh, Roosevelt appointed Wallace as secretary of commerce. Wilkinson. Nice above ground crypt there. Got the vent holes there on the side. More vent holes. So again, he was like I said, appointing Secretary of Commerce. Um, Roosevelt died April 1945 and Truman succeeded him as president and Wallace continued to serve as uh, Secretary of Commerce until 46 when Truman fired him for delivering a speech urging uh, um, Regarding some policies he had toward the Soviet Union, Wallace and, the, Wallace and his supporters, which he had many, um, established a nationwide progressive party and launched a third party campaign for president. The progressive platform uh, called for a, uh, some different policies toward the Soviet Union, desegregation of uh, public schools, racial and gender equality, and national health insurance. Crazy. Talking about this stuff for... 70 years and uh, we still haven't figured out a solution for that. It seems like we're going backwards from where they were in the 40s. Um, but anyways, he was he wasn't necessarily sympathetic. He just wanted a different policy toward uh, the communist influence. And uh, anyways, he ran and he received just 2.4% of the popular vote. Uh, Wallace broke with the Progressive Party in the 1950s of the Korean War and in 1952 he published where I was wrong, where he declared the Soviet Union utterly, utterly evil. Sherman, this is a significant family here in Des Moines area. Quite the, uh, 
quite the crypt. He largely fell, uh, anyways, back to Wallace, he, he largely fell out of, uh, um, kind of fell into political obscurity and uh, after the 1950s, but continued to make public appearances uh, until his, uh, until a year before his death in 1965. So, a little bit more about him. His grave just right up here. I finally found it here. Wallace remained, you know, like I said, he remained pretty active immediately after um, his 48 campaign. But again, uh, he, uh, he kind of went into, kind of like I said, a political obscurity. Uh, he continued to co-own and take an interest in the company. He had established Pioneer Hybrid, which um, is a massive, massive uh, company today. He didn't endorse anybody in the 52 presidential election, but in the 56 presidential election, he uh, endorsed incumbent Republican Dwight uh, Eisenhower over Adelaide Stevenson. And uh, like I said again, Wallace was a Republican early in his career until he switched to the Democrat. So he was a, you know, he had some, he had some leanings both ways. Um... He had several children. I don't have their names, unfortunately, with me. But here we are, actually, at his grave here. Family stone. And here we go. 1888, Henry A. Wallace to 1960. I forgot what I said, 65. U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, 1933 to 1940. Vice President of the United States, 41 to 45, and U.S. Secretary of Commerce, 45 to 46. Buried next to his wife, Elio Brown, wife of Henry Ford, mother of Henry, Robert, and Jean. So three children here. Children are not buried here. Take a little walk around his grave here. Flags are in poor shape. Need to be replaced. We got the uh, latest auxiliary seal. Wallace embedded there. Same on the back side, just Wallace on his stone. I said he's actually fairly easy to find. Find the grave was pretty accurate, but I didn't know what I was uh, parked on the wrong side there, I guess. So there we go. The grave of Henry Wallace, Vice President of the United States of America under the Roosevelt administration.